she's the wholesome farm girl from Kansas, forever stranded on a desert island in the Pacific after a fateful three-hour tour. Her name is Mary Ann Summers, and she's one of the seven castaways on the sitcom Gilligan's Island. She was played by Dawn Wells, who still receives fan mail today for her Gilligan's Island character. I can't go anywhere in the world. It's in 30 languages everywhere. There's no dating it. There's no 56 Chevy or mini skirts or anything that tell you what era it was. Wells' Marianne character was especially popular with male viewers of the show, along with the island's other beautiful castaway, Hollywood actress Ginger Grant, played by Tina Louise. And she's very familiar with the age-old question from the show's male viewers, Ginger or Marianne? You'd marry Marianne, you'd date Ginger. You'd have to buy her a martini and take her out to dinner. Marianne would raise your children and help you in the farm. <laughs> Don Wells was born on October 18, 1938, in Reno, Nevada. An honor roll student, she was chosen as Miss Nevada in 1959 and went on to the Miss America pageant. Eventually, she ended up studying drama at the University of Washington and moved to Hollywood after graduating. The Warner Brothers put me under option for contract. They didn't pick up my contract, but I did all the shows. 77 Sunset Strip, Surfside 6, Maverick, all of that. I did it all, so then you have film on you. And once you have film on you, then people can see what you do. Among those watching Wells was Sherwood Schwartz, who created Gilligan's Island for CBS. And CBS really liked me. One of the vice presidents, she and I were very, I was very into what Mary Ann would wear. I knew what she would do with her hair. I said, I know this character. And I was just lucky. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. The show premiered on CBS in September 1964 with an unforgettable theme song which introduced the castaways, or at least most of them. Wells and the actor who played the professor, Russell Johnson, weren't originally listed in the opening credits. Wells said it was because Tina Louise's contract stipulated that she should be listed at the end of the opening credits. But that changed during the second season, thanks to Gilligan, Bob Denver. And he said, then I'm quitting. Then put my, put my name at the end of the credits then, if you aren't gonna do it. It's so silly with only seven people, but that's ego. That was, I was making the same amount of money whether my name was in front or not, it didn't make a difference. The show became a modest hit, even though critics hated it. There's no message except goodwill, pretty to look at, out of the living room, pretty good looking cast, Ginger was gorgeous, I had short shorts, the professor was a hunk, and Bob and Alan were wonderful together, Gilligan and the Skipper were wonderful comedy, so it was, it, it's a good, was a good show. Trite, perhaps, nothing to really think about, but it made you happy. Tell me about your memories with your uh... Colleagues then. Well, I, I don't think there was any discord at all. I think the most uncomfortable maybe was Ginger, because I think she was a Broadway star or a movie star and, and, and not really wanting to do a series, I don't think. But there was never any discord, and we had a great relationship. All of us did. Gilligan's Island was canceled in 1967, but it almost immediately began its second life in syndication, often airing as after-school fare for younger viewers. The show's 98 episodes remain popular in syndication today, although the cast never benefited from the reruns. We didn't get residuals, my gosh. We've, we've been on the air forever. We didn't get a dime. I read all. that. No. What a shame. Does oh. that make you a little bitter? Well, Jim Backus was really angry. He said, you know, what can you do? What's a contract? I mean, you can't be bitter about it. That's what it was. Wells moved to the theater after the show's run ended, where she has appeared in critically acclaimed live shows like Love, loss and what I wore. Wells continues to be an ambassador for Gilligan's Island with two books based on the show. She's even saved her iconic short shorts. The shorts are in my drawer. They are not. Yes, they are. First short shorts ever. I really need to put them in. The Smithsonian was interested, but they lock everything up. They, that was pretty, you know, pretty daring, I think, at that time. I don't know who wore them. They're this big. And I was thinking the other day, what did I wear underneath these? They didn't even have thongs or any of that kind of stuff. What was I wearing? And I know I wasn't going commando or whatever you call it. I don't know. 